So I want to just talk about briefly, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of, of, of the Almighty. And then I think a couple of lines of, or some, some lines down, it talks about, uh, as a matter of fact, let me bring it up really quickly. It says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, and then it says, even the most high, your dwelling place, then, et cetera, et cetera. So because you have made the most high, your dwelling place, then the result of that are all of these things of you, you know, you're being protected, you're being saved, you're being delivered, you're experiencing the beauty of God's hand because this is where you are dwelling. The, the, your home, you have made your home the most high. So again, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Okay. What God are you talking about? What are you saying here? I'm going to read a couple of notes. These notes are kind of confusing. Uh, they could be, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to read it anyway. So the beginning thought that I had was, and I don't mind sharing, you know, the mechanics of how I go through my thing with you guys, because, you know, we're all family. We're all in this together. We're all trying to learn what God needs us to know. So my first note is, I wonder if the beginning and really all of Psalms 91 is referring to dwelling in the presence of God, meaning the secret place is God's nature. So when you dwell in God's nature, you exist within the ways of God. Now, when I mean exist, I mean, we know what it means to, to, to exist in this physical world. You are here. You have a job. You have family. You have responsibilities. You have goals. You have ideas. Um, you have all of these things that should bring uh, meaning uh, and fulfillment to your life. So you're existing in this place. So God says when you dwell in God's nature, it's literally the, uh, the place where, where, where you exist. You exist within the ways of God, the ways of God. This means you think like God, speak like God, and you do what God would do in your everyday living. You do what God would do in your everyday living. So the difficulty about this moment for me is, you know, this ministry is, uh, uh, you know, God has commissioned us to talk about, to bring, to teach the divine flow, learning to uh, 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 exist with God in a way that you seamlessly allow God to take you into the places where you belong eventually and ultimately getting, getting you into your thriving place. So for us, that a lot of that a lot of years it looked like we were just being still where a lot of people who are in the faith and in and other things they're like man no faith without works you know is is dead if there's no movement in your faith then it's not working which that is an absolute fact when it is an absolute fact, meaning God still is the orchestrator of your life. So he still takes you through systems and processes to ultimately get you to um, this place where he can trust you to move freely, you know, uh, with his presence, uh, with faith, without necessarily having to wait or having to ask. But that is a specific season. So that that's the difficulty you know, at times for me talking about this moment, because what I'm getting ready to say sounds like it could be contrary to, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, resting in God or allowing God to move you. And, and those movements sometimes can be being still. So I hope you caught it. So. But the fantastic part about this scripture is in th these two lines, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Abiding under the shadow of the almighty is actually living um, uh, 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 or existing. It's living. It's it's experiencing the beauty and the fruitfulness of the kingdom of God. You literally are experiencing the power. The ecclesia, not the ecclesia, the church. The, I think the I think that the, the right term is ecclesia, which is the authority of God, the ultimate authority of God. So when you dwell here, this is what it means. So the question is, what does it mean to dwell? Dwell in the consistent presence of God. 
So this is what the Lord wants you to know right now. To dwell in the consistent presence of God is to literally act like God would act. So let's imagine this. Imagine God is sitting in a chair and uh, he's in a house, he's, he's in a chair. And then all of a sudden somebody breaks in, the enemy breaks in the house, kicks down the door and is holding all of these uh, weapons, aiming them at God. And God is is there. What do you think God would do? Knowing that he's God. Knowing that there's no rival, knowing that there's no comparison, knowing that there's no equal. You can I mean, I mean, you can come up with all kind of, you know, all kind of images, but they're all going to point to God being the ultimate power. There's nothing that can overthrow him. So when we learn to dwell in the secret place, the secret place is literally the place of of this understanding that whatever you are going for, whatever you are after, whatever uh, uh, conquering is needed to be done in and through you, then you have no. I'm trying to find a word for it. You you um, there's no second guessing it there. There's no. There's no uh, you know that there's nothing that can can win against this particular mind. So to to dwell in the secret place is literally to live from the mind of God. We know what it's like to live from the mind of Jamal or the mind of Lashandra or Sarah or Peter or Jake or Billy. You know, we all have been conditioned in this physical world to have the mind that we're using to dictate our movements. The mind that you have right now is going to tell you what to do when you when you get off this message or or it's going to tell you what to do, um, you know, on your job or when you're faced with a specific situation. So the mind of God literally tells you what to do in these certain moments and you know that we have we really it's all the moments so every experience that you have um physically you can have spiritually which which should translate into the physical so learning to dwell in god's presence is literally allowing the mind of god to dictate every step you take from the truth of that mind again if God was sitting in a chair and the enemy came in, the truth would be from God's mind that I'm not in danger because I can't be because I'm God. I'm not only God, but I'm the enemy's God, too. So really, really, really considering and accepting that place is going to give you a different type of freedom. It's going to give you a different type of expression. But then it goes on. Well, it, um, I, I wanted to add because I have another note here. So. So again, the, the most high is where you live. This is the constant presence of God. Whereas, whereas Christ is the person dwelling in the presence, meaning in order to benefit from God's presence, it takes a specific character and it takes the character of Christ or I should say, which is the character of Christ to perpetually, perpetually activate the ecclesia that comes from the most high's presence. So you've heard me time and time again, if you have, I said God responds to God. God only responds to God. God is second to none. Um, he doesn't, uh, uh, um, he, 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 Christ did it all, Jesus paid for it all. So it's already done, it's already set up. And he doesn't see you. He doesn't see you, your sin, your old you or your old ways. He sees what you've decided to put on and you've decided to put on Christ. So when you put on Christ, when you accept that mind, again, what does it say? Let this mind, which was also in Christ Jesus, be in you. So this is this is it sounds like I'm saying a couple of different things, but because you have the, 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 the presence of God, you're in the presence, but. The thing that can only dwell in the presence is the mind. 
is the mind of God. Christ is the mind of God. Christ is the character of God, the nature of God. So there's this thing that you put on that is this presence and this nature that equips you to not only dwell in the presence, but to benefit from what the presence offers you. When you are in the secret place of the Most High, you realize that your attitude is like God's. Everything that you see in this physical world, everything that you experience, every seeming dilemma or seeming, uh, sh uh, um, what is it, limitation is not a dilemma at all. It's not a limitation at all when it's coming from the mind of God. It's an opportunity to witness the kingdom. So I'm going to stop there. I didn't want it to go this long. Um, I pray it makes sense. If you guys have any questions about it, of course, always uh, reach out to us because we love questions. So especially me. So uh, good. I pray it makes sense, man. L uh, let the Holy Spirit saturate you with the truth that he wants to, uh, uh, to extract here and deposit in you so that you can move forward and go higher in these things of God. Pastor Jamal, I'll talk to you. Peace.